Welcome to video number three of the Brushless Rocket series. If you haven't seen the previous few videos, you should probably go check those out. This is the first brushless rocket that I've crashed a lot. In the last video, I tried to fly it without the little quadcopter stabilizer motors on the top, and I was testing if just this motor down here with the thrust vectoring fins had enough to control to recover out of a free fall. And a ton of people suggested using fins on the top to help it fall flat. And that wouldn't really help me achieve my initial goal because that was to have it fall horizontally and the fins would just kind of ride it and have it fall upright like an arrow going downward. Fins would definitely help it stabilize coming out of a, a flat free fall, but they wouldn't really help it fall like this. The reason I wanted it to fall like this was because it has a lot more drag and it'll fall slower horizontally. But so many people people suggested fins that I thought, hey, why not build some little fins and try it out? So these are just little arms that pop up as the rocket starts to fall back down, they should pop up and cause some drag and hopefully cause it to fall right side up. Now this isn't really going towards the goal of the project in the long run, which is to go super high, but this is what makes the project so fun. Testing out little control systems and thruster motors and fins and thrust vectoring and stuff like that. So I thought, hey, let's give it a shot. It hovers. Wow. Oh my god, we're being attacked. That is a large herd of gooses and I just heard a piece of poop land somewhere around me as if there isn't enough goose poop already in this field. I probably just need a lot more surface area here or a lot larger fins to give it enough parachute effect to keep the top up because there is quite a bit of drag down here. Another interesting thing is that these fins are moving opposite in the direction that they would need to to stabilize the rocket from the air coming up so that certainly doesn't help. I would have to somehow reverse the servo direction direction in the air which would be difficult. Might help if I moved the battery even further down but I don't really have a lot of places to mount it down in there. Maybe I'll try and move it right here and just kind of tape it on. But I've got a few more packs so let's try it again. I just velcroed a little three cell battery onto there and I moved it down a bit so we'll see how that helps. The center of gravity of the aircraft is right on the battery so to give you some perspective it's pretty far down so it's pretty surprising that the thing can even track straight so well going up. That actually looked like if I would have raised the throttle, like literally one foot later, it would have hit the ground. It just barely swooped out of that dive fast enough. But that was interesting. It, it looked like it definitely started spinning really fast in the air. It looked like it worked that time with the battery moved down just like three inches. So that just goes to show how sensitive the center of gravity is with this sort of thing. So now I've got this big old four cell battery. It's pretty old. It looks kind of puffy. I don't really know the history of it. I just found it in a bin at free fly. So I'm flying at last. This is my last flight. I'll go really high this time and see See, uh, see how it does.
is so noisy. Wow. That motor just absolutely screams. The battery definitely was fine. The motor doesn't seem too warm. So I kind of want to try a six cell battery. This is a four cell. I just bought a little 1300 six cell. So I might go get that and then come back here later this afternoon and try it again. Then it'll really scream. But that flight was pretty amazing too. I also just kind of barely pulled out of the dive with enough altitude. Successful, a successful launch and landing of the pseudo rocket. It's so cool. This project is just so fun. I would recommend that all you armchair engineers out there go build your own because just messing around with little control systems and dynamics and stuff like that. Oh, it's just great. We got this fat six cell 1300 milliamp hour battery. I want to put it somewhere in here. Well, first we got to see if it even works because I don't know how many cells this ESC can handle. I just found it in a bin at Freefly. It might only handle four cells, so it might blow up when I plug this in. So, ah, that sounded good. Yeah. Woohoo! I'm trying to put the battery as low as possible because that's what worked best last time. Yeah. There we go. Success power. Three, two, one. <laughs> It's too much thrust. Okay, I'm falling. Wow, it had so much thrust that it became overtuned and it just went unstable. That was crazy. So it was oscillating a lot because it was overtuned, but I'm gonna try in acro mode instead of auto level mode, and that might make it not oscillate. <laughs> great it's so hard to get orientation because you can hardly see the thing and it looks the same from every angle so yeah I need to tune the gains down before we can use a six cell with it but that was still pretty cool I think the main reason that it was getting unstable on the way up is because the center of pressure is above the center of gravity right now the center of gravity is about on this battery and the center of pressure is probably above that right now and it should be below it or moving the battery actually further up that would help it ascend but then that would make it a lot more unstable on the descent so i just scooted the battery up a few inches and we're gonna see if that helps the ascent definitely not gonna help the descent so i think the likelihood of it crashing right now with the battery up higher is probably pretty high but you know it makes for a good youtube video so here we go <laughs> wow that's amazing Wow. Oh, it was in an oscillation when it was just hovering here. Did you see that? It yeah. was like quivering. Success power. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's crazy. That's, That's so of, loud. It's a lot of chooch. Moving the center of gravity forward or up definitely helped on the ascent, but there was still overtuning on the yaw axis. With that six cell on there, there's just so much more air blowing over those control surfaces that it just provides so much more control. So I need to tune the gains down a bit, but other than that, it worked pretty well again. It's the next day. The sun is out. Amazing. I've got the rocket connected to INAV here, and I I set a super aggressive TPA. It's at 95% and the breakpoint is at 1400. 
And if you don't know what TPA does, it basically reduces the gains when the throttle is above a certain amount. So the PID gains will be high and then about right here, it'll start to reduce them all the way up to um, only 5% as strong as they were initially when the throttle is at the very top. But TPA only works for pitch and roll, so I'm also going to reduce the yaw gain a bunch. Which is kind of scary because this might make it kind of hard to control on the yaw axis. The parameters are updated, so let's give it a go. That was crazy. As I predicted, the yaw axis was just a mess. I couldn't control it and it wouldn't really stabilize itself. So couldn't really bring the aircraft back to the takeoff point. Um, I just kind of let it drift into this thorn bush over here. It looks like the little camera on the top is missing and now I have to find it in the thorn bush. Uh, looks like we got one servo broken, the ring, everything else looks fine. Oh, the prop got chipped a little bit. That's okay because I was about to retire this rocket anyways because there's new ones in the works. Ah, there it is. It's not in the thorn bush. Amazing. So from the video, it looks relatively smooth. There's some high frequency oscillation at the beginning of the flight where I wasn't at full throttle. And then once I go to full throttle right there, there's definitely a lot more oscillation. I'm not sure if that's overtuning though. That could just be like aerodynamic oscillation. And it fell with only one visible fin popped up. I'm not sure if the others were popped up, but it seems to still work pretty well. It didn't spin as fast this time, which is kind of nice. Another rocket flight in the book. So stay tuned for the next flight because I'm going to be testing out a different control method that I haven't used yet and it should be pretty fun. And then after that I've got a much more advanced rocket that can do stuff like GPS positioning and potentially even solid rocket fuel motors. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.